add some, you know, services and daemons to our Ubuntu server here. So let's go ahead and load up Synaptic Package Manager and we'll look for a few items. One of the things we want to get is NFS, the Networking File System, and that's a daemon that Unix machines use to communicate with each other on the network. Um, so let's go grab that and Yeah, let's go over here. Several dependencies there that we want to install. Um, let's go ahead and grab, we're going to find Samba. That's what we need to communicate with Windows machines um, for NetBIOS and NetBuoy and just to communicate with a Microsoft network. Let's go. Be a Samba and Samba client. And grab the mount commands here. This is an intrusion detection system, by the way. I think we'll grab that while we're here. Smart, but we'll probably cover that on another day. Um, right now, we're just kind of worried about you know certain server services or daemons that we want to load. So we've got NFS, we've got Samba. Um, now let's go and look for. Let's see what else we want to add here. We'll add the Apache web server. We will add FTP. Well, let's go ahead and do that. So this is a common internet file system, but that's just, you know, for different communication purposes, we want to add that. Let's go ahead and add the Apache web server. And this will kind of build a list. Once we've added all these packages, it'll build a list and summarize all of their dependencies, and we'll be able to install them all at one time. So Apache, Apache 2. Um, I'm going to go with Apache 2 here. The additional features here, all of the dependencies. And we'll go ahead and get VSFTPD. It's our FTP server. There's VSFTPD. These are just some of the more common uh, services or daemons that you might run on a Linux machine. I'm going to go ahead and say apply. And in this case, to be upgraded, to be installed, unchanged. So we've got a, got a lot of things to install here. Uh, only 20 more megabytes of space, but lots of packages to download. Let's go ahead and grab those packages. And we will cut out here and go into configuring the services. Just to save a little bit of time. So be right back. Okay. Let's check some of the things that we've accomplished by installing some of our networking services in Apache. First thing I'm going to do is just go into the web browser. And we'll check localhost, which is the loopback 127001. And this will test Apache. In this case, there's Apache. And by default, it's set to go ahead and serve up a page index.html. It works, so we know that's there. Now let's open up a terminal. And we're going to zoom in. Check some of our configuration settings. I'm going to print working directory. Oops, that slipped down there. Let me move that back up. in the middle there. Okay. So I want to recurse one directory and we'll go into home, do a listing. 
Now notice that when I installed VSFTPD, it added a directory, FTP, and let me do a long listing. Notice there's a group here that you know has membership with FTP. It has read privileges and execute, not write, and that's more secure by default. Um, no group is a group that corresponds to FTP. FTP is treated as a user account or it's a service account. So again, if I did groups FTP, you'd see there's no group, so it's a member of FTP. For our exercise, we're going to go into FTP and we're going to use the sudo command and we're going to touch and make a few files. Um, Deathray secrets and fusion fission fusion bomb maybe it should be fission fusion fission or who knows but anyway all right now if we look roots the owner here let's go ahead and change the group membership Um, and we'll, we'll give it FTP access, so no group, and I'll just use a wildcard there. And now all of our files, in this case, have group membership under no group, which is our FTP user account. All right, now I'm going to traverse and go up to the root directory, and we're going to look at Etsy and boot some of our configuration files. Etsy is right here, and if we go into Etsy... I'll do a quick listing. Most of your configuration files for Linux you'll find in this folder. And just as an example, X11 for X Windows. Um, there's VNC for the VNC server, VSFTPD conf for FTP server. Um, oh, good grief, there's the routing daemon, virtual machine for Java, genome settings, PCMCIA for our laptop. Let's keep going. There's cron for time tasks or scheduled tasks. Let's jump up here. Here's Apache 2 for our web server. There's a config file in there called httpd.conf. There's fstab. I'm going to use the catalog command which just displays things. And I'm going to show you the contents of F fstab. I'll pipe it to less in case it's too much. Uh, Oh, yeah, it looks like I had one too many S's there. Okay, in this case, now notice I'm mounting that NTFS partition with my movies and music and MP3s and WMAs, my media files. That's device HDA3 media, that's the NTFS partition. So, um, again, if I were to do the mount command, notice that it's mounted. In this case, DEV HDA3 is mounted on media. And that's just an example of my FSTAB configuration file. And if I were to list media, um, let me do sudo list media. And you know, in this case, these are all of the NTFS uh, directories that I have on that particular partition. So what we want, what we're interested in, or what we want to do, we're going to use vim, and I'm going to sudo vim, which is Linux's text editor. And I want to edit the FTP configuration file, vsftpd.conf, and I'm going to go down here. Anonymous access is good. That's actually safer than you can allow u authenticated users um, with local accounts to log in via FTP, but that's usually considered more dangerous. That way, you just know that you only put things in FTP that you know, you would even allow your worst enemy to view. CHO, and you can allow users to recurse um, out of or directories or forbid them from recursing out of directories. What we'll change here, um, and it looks like I've already changed this, but I'm going to go ahead and I go into insert. Okay, let's, by default, this would have been commented out, FTPD banner. And what we want to do is uncomment it. And then welcome to Feisty Find 7. You can put a message here. Contact Charles Germany. So, um, we'll just say, hi, mom. Hi, mom. There you go. And I'm going to hit escape. 
because I want to save. Now remember, I need root privileges to do this, so I use sudo. I'm going to hit X. That'll write the file and save it. And if I want to check it, um, I'll just pipe it to less. The pipe symbol, remember, lets you take input from one command and pipe it to another command, or lets you take the output from one command, pipe it to another, another command as input. And less just lets us selectively scroll through. So anonymous FTP, we'll go down, and our banner message is there. So um, let's go ahead and exit out. Now whenever you change these configuration files, um, you know, pretty much anything that you modify in, under Linux is going to modify these configuration files, these text-based configuration files. When you do that, you usually need to restart the daemon. So since we just modified the very secure FTP server, VSFTPD, or the FTP daemon, we're going to need to restart that. So I'm going to go to etc, and init D is where you'll find soft links to uh, most of your executables, and VSFTPD, the daemon, and I'm going to feed it the command restart. And okay, I just restarted the FTP daemon. It says okay, okay, so let's go ahead and test it out. And up here I'll just FTP and I'll use the loopback, 127001. And here's my message banner. Hi mom, contact Charles Germany. Alternatively, if you want multiple lines of text, um, like when I, what I have on Frankenstein, it's, it's just an external file. You can have it go out and read an external file and, and load that text in there. But here, just a quick and easy way or quick and dirty way to put this in the VSFTPD conf, uh, configuration file. So I'm going to log in as anonymous, which is all that I have enabled, and password. And I'll do an ls, and here is my death ray and fusion, fission, fusion bomb, and secrets right there. And I'll go ahead and exit. And now... The other, um, there's two more directories we're interested in while we're talking about configuration files. I'm going to go to boot, and notice here that I have a folder called grub. You'll see grub up here, I'm moving the cursor. And here, you'll see, a f in, in this case, your configuration files. In Fedora, it's there's grub.conf. What Ubuntu did is they kind of modified it. I'm not 100% sure why, but you know, different strokes, different folks. If you look at menu list, um, these are actually your startup options. And you can modify this file and give yourself more or less time, you know, the number of seconds when it starts. So this, this is equivalent to uh, grub.conf under Fedora or the boot INI file. You can change your menu names if you want to load it in the text editor and modify it. Um, you know, where directories are, in this case, the physical drive and the partition. Um, the title that appears in the menu, the splash screen. So that's a very important configuration file. And if you ever need to reinstall the bootloader, all you have to do is just type grub. Go into this directory, type grub, and that actually launches an executable. All right, I'm going to go back to the root directory. The other one we're interested in, because of our web server, our Apache web server, is the directory var. So we're going to go into var, and we'll list a few things here. The main one we're interested in is www. Our, that's the World Wide Web or our Apache folder. So we'll go there and let's list the contents that are there. And this is actually what you saw. By default, um, the permissions are set so that we can view files in this directory. It's equivalent to turning on directory browsing in Internet Information Services um, on 2003 or 2008. Um, what we want to do, we'll just create a quick uh, index.html file in this folder. So let's go ahead and do that and the way to do that we'll sudo, we'll vim and we'll give it a name and I'm going to get i for insert and html tag and we'll add a head tag and of course you would load your own web pages in here. This is where I have networkingprogramming.com We'll call this test page. Let's add our closing tags. And
That's hex f f f f f f f is hexadecimal for white, and all zeros is hexadecimal for black. We'll put that in the body tag. We need to close the body tag, and we need to close the HTML tag, and we'll just add some centers here, and we'll add a few lines. And let's go ahead and change the font here. So, and HTML is not really case sensitive. You just want to make sure you have your closing tags, but we'll make it Arial. And let's make it large. And let's tell you what, let's put that inside the center tag. And doesn't have to be lowercase, but just my obsessive compulsive personality wants that to be consistent. And we'll fly the skull and crossbones here. Arg pirates we be, but this will be our test page. Let me exit out, and I want to hit X to save. And in this case, I want to make sure that the appropriate permissions are on that page. And so other has read, and the group has read. And that'll be our Apache user group, so we're good there. Um, there's our index.html. And the default file, let me go over here. And let me go over here. And... Arg pirates we be, and there's our pirate web page. Okay, um, we've tested those items. Let me let me if I want to use this prompt on here. It's already open. It's already sized appropriately. Okay, we're going to recurse up. Go back to our default directory. Go back to Etsy. Um, one other configuration file we'll look at, and that is Samba. Um, this is how we can do, um, you know, some network shares. And actually, there's host allow, host and I, our, our host files are here too. Um, hmm, let's do Samba. And we'll lo list the contents of Samba. What we're interested in is samba.conf. So again, I'm going to sudo and vim samba.conf. And these would be directories that we share out that would be visible on a Windows network. So we could use our Linux machine as a Windows file server. And our, our Windows machines will pretty much be happy. They would just consider it one of the you know one of the boys or what we'll change here, um and it looks like I've already changed this, but I'm gonna go ahead and I go into insert. Okay, let's by default this would have been commented out, FTPD banner. And what we want to do is uncomment it. And then welcome to Feist Find Seven. You can put a message here Contact Charles Germany, so um, we'll just say, hi, mom. Hi, mom. There you go. And I'm going to hit escape because I want to save. Now, remember, I need root privileges to do this, so I use sudo. I'm going to hit X. Now I'll write the file and save it. And if I want to check it, um, I'll just pipe it to less. The pipe symbol, remember, Let's you take input from one command and pipe it to another command. Or let you take the output from one command, pipe it to another, another command as input. And let's just let's just selectively scroll through. So anonymous FTP. We'll go down. And our banner message is there. So um, let's go ahead and exit out. Now, whenever you change these configuration files, um, you know pretty much anything that you modify in, under Linux is going to modify these configuration files. These text-based configuration files. When you do that, you usually need to restart the daemon. So since we just modified the very secure FTP server, VSFTPD, or the FTP daemon, we're going to need to restart that. So I'm going to go to etc, and initd is where you'll find soft links to uh, most of your executables, and VSFTPD, the daemon, and I'm going to feed it the command restart. 
And okay, I just restarted the FTP daemon. Says okay, okay, so let's go ahead and test it out. And up here I'll just FTP and I'll use the loopback, 127001. And here's my message banner. Hi mom, contact Charles Germany. Alternatively, if you want multiple lines of text, um, like when I, what I have on Frankenstein, it's, it's just an external file. You can have it go out and read an external file and, and load that text in there. But here, just a quick and easy way or a quick and dirty way to put this in the VSFTPD conf, uh, configuration file. So I'm going to log in as anonymous, which is all that I have enabled, and password. And I'll do an ls, and here is my death ray and fusion, fission, fusion bomb, and secrets right there. And I'll go ahead and exit. And now, the other, um, there's two more directories we're interested in while we're talking about configuration files. I'm going to go to boot, and notice here that I have a folder called grub. You'll see grub up here, I'm moving the cursor. And here, you'll see, a f in, th in this case here, configuration files. In Fedora, it's there's grub.conf. What Ubuntu did is they kind of modified it. I'm not 100% sure why, but you know, different strokes, different folks. If you look at menu list, um, these are actually your startup options. And you can modify this file and give yourself more or less time, you know, the number of seconds when it starts. So this, this is equivalent to uh, grub.conf under Fedora or the boot INI file. You can change your menu names if you want to load it in a text editor and modify it. Um, you know, where directories are, in this case, the physical drive and the partition, um, the title that appears in the menu, the splash screen. So that's a very important configuration file. And if you ever need to reinstall the bootloader, all you have to do is just type grub. Go into this directory, type grub, and that actually launches an executable. All right, I'm going to go back to the root directory. The other one we're interested in, because of our web server, our Apache web server, is the directory var. So we're going to go into VAR, and we'll list a few things here. The main one we're interested in is www, our, that's the World Wide Web, or our Apache folder. So we'll go there, and let's list the contents that are there. And this is actually what you saw. By default, um, the permissions are set so that we can view files in this directory. It's equivalent to turning on directory browsing in Internet Information Services um, on 2003 or 2008. Um, what we want to do, we'll just create a quick uh, index.html file in this folder. So let's go ahead and do that. And the way to do that, we'll sudo, we'll vim, and we'll give it a name. And I'm going to get i for insert and HTML tag. And we'll add a head tag. And of course, you would load your own web pages in here. This is where I have networkingprogramming.com. We'll call this test page. Let's add our closing tags. And. That's hex f f f f f f f is hexadecimal for white, and all zeros is hexadecimal for black. We'll put that in the body tag. We need to close the body tag, and we need to close the HTML tag, and we'll just add some centers here, and we'll add a few lines. And let's go ahead and change the font here. So, and HTML is not really case sensitive. You just want to make sure you have your closing tags, but we'll make it Arial. And let's make it large. And let's tell you what, let's put that inside the center tag. And doesn't have to be lowercase, but 
just my obsessive compulsive personality wants that to be consistent and Fly the skull and crossbones here. Arg, pirates, we be, but this will be our test page. Let me exit out, and I want to hit X to save. And in this case, I want to make sure that the appropriate permissions are on that page. And so other has read, and the group has read. And that'll be our Apache user group, so we're good there. Um, there's our index.html. And the default file, let me go over here. And let me go over here and Arg Pirates we be. And there's our pirate web page. Okay, um we've tested those items. Let me let me, let me use this prompt on here. It's already open, it's already sized appropriately. Okay, we're gonna recurse up, go back to our default directory, go back to Etsy. Um one other configuration file we'll look at, and that is Samba. Um, this is how we can do, um, you know, some network shares. And actually, there's host allow, host and I, our, our host files are here too. Um, hmm, let's do Samba. And we'll list the contents of Samba. What we're interested in is samba.conf. So again, I'm going to sudo and vim samba.conf and these would be directories that we share out that would be visible on a Windows network so we could use our Linux machine as a Windows file server and our, our Windows machines would pretty much be happy they would just consider it one of the you know one of the boys or one of, one of the gang they, they wouldn't be too upset kind of and you know there's an example here in our configuration file so we'll just kind of follow that example but the directory that we want to share, and these are all commented out with comment tags. The semicolon in this case is commenting these things out, but let's say I wanted to share out a directory propaganda. Now that will share with the world. And this would just be what would appear, believe it, that'll be our comment. And we'll make it writable in this case. We'll let people write files there. And we'll need to make this directory. So we need to make that at the root level. So we'll go when we get done, we'll go and do that. And we'll make this public so that it can be viewed by users. Now it just give us a directory that was shared there called propaganda. And let's create another one. Super fun test. Uh, okay. And it's really entertaining. Yay. In this case, we won't be writable. Again, we need to remember to create the directories, but super fun test and public. We'll set that to be public. Okay, we're going to save this. And let's go ahead. Also, we need to make our folders here. Okay. Do our super fun test. Uh, all right, and let's do propaganda. I mean, we just want to restart our Samba service, so I'm going to sudo Etsy and then that. Here's a link to my. Uh, I'll give it the option restart. Stop our Samba daemons and restart them. And now we should have these fold folders shared out. So we'll check it with the GUI and then we'll go ahead and use our network. Matter of fact, we'll go to places first and let's go ahead and use our network here.
Okay, um, let's go ahead and test our configuration here. We'll go over to Network. And here's our Feisty Fun 7 host. And here are our two folders. Propaganda and Super Fun Test. And this is how we would appear on a Windows network. For NFS, I need to go into Etsy and there's no folder by default called exports but what I need to do is create um, no, a, a file called exports so again I'm just going to use my text editor and I'll create a file called exports and for NFS what I want to and propaganda was my first one and the way this works is you would do the I could specify a single IP address or a whole network. So if I were going to do like a a whole class C network, that would be like a whole class C network. And then the subnet mask here that I wanted to mask. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let anybody access my propaganda because I, I I want wide coverage. And then, if I wanted to allow read-write access under NFS, I would type RW for propaganda. And let's say for super fun test, I need to match my share directory there again. I'll allow anybody. And I'll make this one read-only with RO. So read-write and read-only. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. And when I do that, I need to use a command called export fs and pass it the A option. 